a beautiful reference photo I found on Pixabay, and I think it might be more suitable for like an old-timey Dutch oil painting than an ink painting, but I just couldn't resist the beautiful apples and leaves, and the cornucopia is one of my favorite subjects. As I approach this painting, I like the dark background, and I think I will be using masking mostly to preserve some of these very lights and to keep the structure of the drawing. So it'll be just sporadic partial masking on this one. So here is the drawing. I'm going to start by just masking some of these outlines. I'm going to mask the whole braid. Technically, probably none of this piece needs to be masked, but I'm doing it for my convenience. And this is just the lighter areas of these apples. There's always a trade-off because all of these lines of masking fluid will have to be integrated back in, but I like keeping the structure and having the hints of where to put things. Again, one could do this really probably entirely without any masking fluid. For our cornucopia, I've selected some autumny colors. So I've got espresso, ginger, poppy field, cranberry, sunshine, and botanical. I also have some eggplant. And I'm just going to drop them in kind of where they go, but not too worried about it. And this piece, I think I'll just let dry flat, so we'll try to cover the whole piece with the ink. The dried ink background for our cornucopia and I'm going to remove the masking fluid. So now that the masking fluid is off, the first step is to blend in the masking fluid and try to establish where all of the different fruits and leaves are. And for this I will just begin with alcohol and the brush, tapping it off on a cotton ball. I'm going to gently both remove the ink and blend the ink into the mast areas. So kind of pulling from one and pushing it over to the other. I'll start in the cornucopia, establishing where the fruits are. And I'll try to leave the lightest areas still white. I can sort of see the lines that are beneath. Some of these white areas are really intended to have yellow leaves in it, so I think I will not do much with them and wait till I put in the yellow ink. It's very handy, the, color, the background colors I picked um, are so many of the colors that are in here, so it gives us a kind of a head start when we go to add the ink. And I'm just going to carefully add it to a number of these leaves. This is the ginger.
This is the teak wood, and I'll use it to um, begin to establish some more of the darks. The next color I'm going to add in is this limeade. And there are some green leaves throughout the piece. So let's get a touch of green in there uh, before we start lifting. The green is a nice contrast to the red. Point, I'm going to use the pointy swaps and go around and, and find some of our lights. At this point, I'm going to use the sepia pen, which is great for this piece because it'll blend completely in, and just clean up some of the edges and make sure I understand where all the leaves are. So there's a lot of um, irregular shapes, and I think they could benefit from just a little tightening. That's enough of this kind of sketching in for right now. This is the sunset orange, and I'm doing about the same thing. Alcohol inks don't necessarily glaze, but we are getting a sort of a glazed effect by adding small layers of color one over the other. This is the honeycomb, and we'll make a pass around with that color. This is the poppy field, and I will use that for the red. Up until this point, we've really just been laying in color, doing a little lightening and darkening, but we haven't really attempted to paint anything yet. So I'm going to start um, just sort of trying to make these, start with the apples, try to make them look a little bit more like apples, and blend some of this color.
gonna use the brush and just go around and and slightly work on the leaves a little bit. Probably not add any more ink, but just smooth them out. to intensify some of the colors probably with the honeycomb and then one of the greens possibly botanical and poppy field a little bit of tightening with the pen. I don't think we need to do too much, but At this point, I don't think it needs any white pen on it. I think it might pop off and be a little bit glary. So I'm gonna go ahead and sign it. And if I need to make a change later, I'll come back, but hopefully we're good.